So welcome uh, back, everyone. Uh, we've just had our uh, our panel session discussing the results of the SDG barometer, and uh, now it's uh, our great pleasure to welcome uh, Jeffrey Sachs to join us for a short intervention. Uh, I'll do a quick introduction. Um, Professor Sachs is a director, former director of the Earth Institute at Columbia University and now director of the Center for Sustainable Development, also president of the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network. Um, and as we all know, one of the world's leading experts on sustainable development, economic development and the fight against poverty. And um, He's an SDG advocate for the United Nations Secretary General uh, Antonio Guterres and has served as a special advisor, in fact, to several uh, UN Secretary Generals, uh, including Ban Ki-moon, uh, and then in the times of the Millennium Development Goals, also Kofi Annan. Um, wonderful to have you with us today, Jeffrey. Uh, over Thank to you. you to share some brief thoughts. Thank you very much, <clears throat> and good afternoon, uh, friends, uh, ladies and gentlemen, colleagues. Uh, thank you for inviting me to the SDG Forum of Brussels. Well, uh, what a mess we're in, and uh, we really need to get out of the mess, understand how we got so deeply into this mess, and then move forward. Uh, so the mess is, of course, that with the COVID raging, we are not going to solve anything. Uh, we're really uh, facing a, a dire crisis and a rather shocking one. Uh, I have to tell you, uh, pouring over data day in, day out uh, since uh, the start of this pandemic and serving as uh, chair of the Lancet COVID-19 Commission, I am puzzled by uh, the situation in Europe. I understand full well the situation in the United States. We have, a, we have a mentally unstable leader who is completely uninterested in addressing a, a human crisis and public health crisis. Uh, but I don't understand Europe's situation truly. Uh, the pandemic is raging. Uh, governments uh, in Europe are not crazy. Uh, the public is uh, rather sophisticated, uh, and yet the uh, spread is shocking. Uh, clearly, there are breakdowns at several levels. Uh, public health uh, is not functioning. <clears throat> we know from the pandemic uh, experience, especially in the Asia-Pacific region, it is absolutely possible to suppress this virus. It requires systematic contact tracing, systematic and rapid testing, self-isolation or quarantine of uh, individuals who are either uh, confirmed to be infected or suspected to be infected pending uh, test outcomes, and public behaviors of wearing face masks, physical distancing, avoiding large gatherings, uh, and uh, avoiding uh, other super spreader events. It's actually not so complicated. It's not simple because this is a virus that uh, transmits asymptomatically. Uh, so it's not possible to clamp down entirely, but China, Taiwan, Korea, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Hong Kong, Vietnam, Lao PDR, Cambodia, Thailand, that is the Asia Pacific region, has about one hundredth of the incidence and prevalence of the disease of Western Europe. And that, to my mind, is really a call for self examination because our systems are not working and our publics are not uh, behaving properly. Again, in the US, I understand the context. Uh, we have a president who has absolutely rejected every basic public health measure. We had no testing, <clears throat> excuse me. We had no testing from the start. Uh, we had no contact tracing. 
We had no systematic national policy. Uh, Trump politicized face masks from the start, made them some left-wing idea so his right-wing base could rail against wearing face masks as if this is some profound denial of personal liberty. Uh, he militarized uh, this response in terms of making it as polarized politically as possible, making the repeatedly false claim that either you let the epidemic run its course or you have to shut down the economy, which is a lie. What you need to do is to do basic public health interventions. So I understand the U.S. context, but I am very concerned about my favorite part of the world, which is Europe to understand what is happening in Europe, that the rates of uh, incidents, uh, new cases per million, top the world's charts, uh, the death rates top the world's charts, and this new wave that is uh, ensuing is uh, also massive. Of course, it's probably the case that people in Europe move so much uh, are crossing national borders uh, so frequently that a fundamental problem in Europe, as it has been in the United States, is that there is no effective control at the European wide level. This is probably another case uh, where we need more Europe, not less Europe, because people moving across borders, this seems to be uh, uh, perhaps inevitable the uh, constant reintroductions of infection. And uh, an article yesterday that uh, I've uh, just been reading, tracking uh, the genome uh, of this new wave in Europe, says it originated most likely in Spain, and it spread uh, throughout uh, the rest of Europe uh, with the uh, summer vacationers, party goers, and so on, who uh, have brought this new particular genome. It's not necessarily any different in terms of its transmissibility or uh, burden of disease, but it's a signature uh, that shows that this has been another diffusion across European borders rather than simply the resurgence of cases within discrete uh, outbreaks uh, of separate European countries. So maybe the overarching lesson is more Europe uh, and there should have been a European-wide CDC control from the start uh, with the rational application of the non-pharmaceutical interventions. I raise all of this, even though my topic is the SDGs, for uh, the reasons I mentioned at the start. First, there will be no SDGs until we get this pandemic under control, and we have not done so. Second, uh, the governance failures that we have experienced in this year are real failures. And we will not be able to implement in other areas, whether it's energy transformation, sustainable land use, or other parts of the SDGs, until we solve the governance failures. And we need to understand, is the problem the citizenry uh, and non-compliance with uh, self-help measures? Is the lack of uh, efficacy of national strategies and inattention to the science? Is it the failures of a European-wide systemic approach, which I suspect it is, that's my hypothesis, but uh, unproven, but understanding the governance challenge and the governance failures is extremely important. In the US context, uh, as I said, I attribute a lot to Trump uh, because his failures are so overwhelmingly evident. He's just a disaster, the worst leader we've ever had in our history. And so I hope by next Tuesday we're on a path uh, to uh, correct that. But I'd like to know the European uh, answer. Then, how to move forward. And there is a very important uh, piece of good news. I think an overwhelmingly important uh, a bit of good news, and that is that the European Union, at the Union level, uh, at the uh, Commission and Council level, has adopted the most comprehensive, uh, well-thought-out, 
uh, long-term strategy for achieving sustainable development in the form of the European Green Deal. It's really an excellent framework document in that it addresses the four pillars for sustainable development going forward, decarbonizing the energy system, achieving a circular economy, farm to fork land use, agriculture, and dietary sustainability, and digitalization of our uh, economic uh, and service sectors so that we can receive the benefits uh, of inclusive and efficient public services uh, along uh, with the environmental sustainability. <clears throat> so the European Commission got this right. Uh, hats off uh, to President van der Leyen and uh, to uh, Vice President Timmermans for superb work. But now comes the question of implementation, uh, post-COVID implementation. And there, I just want to close by saying that we need more Europe, not less Europe, because just as with COVID, my suspicion is uh, that uh, the idea of implementing transformation as 27 individual projects, albeit harmonized by uh, EU-wide standards, won't work. What needs to be done is an integrated European strategy that is integrated in renewable energy, integrated in land use strategies, integrated in fiber and digital strategies, truly as a European-wide project. And uh, maybe we'll learn from COVID uh, some lessons about that. Even to this day, there isn't really proper European-wide energy planning. There isn't really proper European-wide food systems planning. These are still largely prerogatives of uh, the 27 rather than uh, of Europe as a whole. But the logic is the same as the logic with COVID, uh, which is that we need intensive cooperation that basically uh, sees uh, Europe as an integrated entity fully uh, because that's how pathogens uh, see it. That's how uh, climate systems, uh, that's how uh, renewable electrons uh, and uh, efficient power see it. So we need that kind of integrated strategy. Final word, Europe did a great job in helping to promote China's announcement last month of reaching net zero emissions. This was clearly uh, a response to the European Green Deal. Japan has done the same. We're going to work on our side of the Atlantic to get rid of this nincompoop and uh, hope to give a real partner for Europe uh, with a Biden administration. If we do that, maybe uh, things will look a lot brighter a week from now. Thank you very much for allowing me to be with you. Thank you, Professor Sachs. Um, we have perhaps uh, just uh, one or two minutes, and I wanted to just uh, link to the SDG barometer. One of the um, questions we had was, do we think that COVID-19 will delay the implementation of the SDGs, even though it obviously emphasizes how important the SDGs all are? And I just wondered your very brief re reflection on that. If we learn properly from COVID and bring it under control, uh, it can be the kind of wake up call that we need to take seriously the underpinnings of sustainable development and the rapid move to digitalization, in my opinion, uh, has is a plus for achieving the SDGs. So while this is a tragedy, a loss of life, massive loss of time, economic dislocation, it actually can uh, enable us to sort the pieces better for a stronger, saner, more sustainable approach going forward. So I would not view it uh, only as a downside, but view it as a set of lessons and ironically, even as opportunities. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. I always appreciate uh, your candor. Uh, in really setting us straight on on exactly it's kind of a reality check right of where we are and what we need to do but always uh, 
seeing also the opportunities. So thank you so much for being with us, Professor Sachs. Thank you uh, for the chance. Have, really a pleasure. We will now uh, share in the uh, in the chat the link to the next session uh, where we will get a reaction from the ministers uh, from the government to what they've heard Professor Sachs say and also earlier in the afternoon. So thank you all. Uh, look out for the link in the chat and we will see you there.